first crush in high school? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh, um, my first crush was probably Lance O'Pry. Duncan Huey. Chris Mitchell which I hope never watches this. Brian Peterson. Matt Kuda. C.H. Herman, he was tall, dark, and handsome. You know, the big stud on campus. He was a couple years older. The guy who got the, the leads in all the plays, was very handsome, big man on campus. Oh yeah. He was just kind of that hot, buff guy. He was punk. He had like that little mustache that he was trying to grow in, and my mom was freaked out because he had facial hair and he was 14. But was a hoe. Just funny, really funny guy. My parents were very brilliant because they hired him as my yard boy. But that didn't quite work out. <laughs> I had a raging crush on him for three years. Never said a word to him. Never. He told me I was the smartest girl he ever knew, so he could never date me. I ended up dating him for three years, and we're best friends now. I ended up dating him a little while my sophomore year, so... Dreams do come true. That would have ruined it. Ab absolutely ruined it if I'd actually had to talk to him because then I would have found out that he was a jock with too much money and probably would have uh, hated me. <laughs> my first kiss. <laughs> I don't remember my first kiss. Oh God, my first kiss. Mm, so lovely and wonderful and magical. Daniel? Oh my gosh. I think it was his best friend, actually. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was my crush's best friend who I dated first. <laughs> That's so bad. I had to get closer to the crush, you know? No. Uh, <laughs> a kid who lived down the street rode over to my house on his skateboard, ran over my foot. I was crying, and so he kissed me. I was in the eighth grade. This is actually very funny because I don't like this kid at all. I don't remember where it was. We had a lot of gum, and it just kind of happened just randomly. We had a ketchup bottle and we spun it and it hit him and all I remember is winter fresh everywhere. It was just a <gasps> and I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, I remember it was by his car outside my parents' house, you know, like walking to his car. Okay, I'll see you later. That was so awkward. <laughs> you know, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we did that. It was very weird. It was very weird. I mean, you know, before it was all my, my teddy bears and stuff, you know, and it's not the same thing. <laughs> so embarrassing to think about. I'm like sweating. <laughs> you know, this is my first kiss. Look, I'm just really desperate. I just want to have my first kiss and I'm sorry that you're dating him, but I don't like him at all. This is like a long, long time ago. So I didn't even like him. And now he still thinks that I like him and he'll still be like, hey, yeah, I was your first kiss. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I never liked you. You were a pity person, okay? But yeah, it was pretty awkward. <laughs> okay, anyways, next question. <laughs> Do you really want me to say this? Oh God, okay. My most embarrassing moment was at a pep rally. I was in choir and we were doing a Messiah performance. I gained a little bit of weight in ninth grade. I was wearing this red dress and these pantyhose and I used to be very, very prissy and I wore dresses every day. I fell off the bleachers. Oh my gosh. I fell off the stage. I sat down at lunch. Somebody picked me up. And my pants split open. <laughs> and they log rolled me down the entire stand in front of everybody. By the time I got to the floor of the gymnasium, my legs went, boo, it happens. In front of the entire school, my skirt was around my waist. I didn't have a jacket to cover anything up, so I had to run to the bathroom with my hands on my butt. To me, that was the most embarrassing moment. That almost brings me to tears, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> Freshman year, I had on a tank top. My first time wearing a thong. And I had on a strapless bra. And I came from a little private school. A little good girl. <laughs> <clears throat> My mom picked me up after school. We're all coming out for exams. And then this, we're in this skirt. I thought I looked really good that day. And these are my friends, okay? Yeah, friends. And I came walking out. One of the guys was like, oh, let's go pull down the skirt down. And I'm like, in the middle of the hall. And he goes, boo! Pulls it down. <gasps> When you have shock, you don't move. I had shock. My life is over. I stood there, okay, like a deer. Maggie, what is going on? I was like totally like, oh my God. I looked down, my strapless bra, which had a little padding because I'm not very big, had moved down. Bent over, pulled the bottom of my skirt up, realized, oh my gosh, I'm pulling the bottom up, rolled it back down, then rolled the top of it up. And I'm like, oh. So I had four. Titties. Then it happened again. Breasts. And all my friends just like, oh, 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 oh. Whatever I can say on camera. <laughs> I'm so mad at them for that. 
And it was very crucial and, 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 and heartbreaking. And that was embarrassing. I just felt like a bigger nerd. Very embarrassing. But that's okay because I got a little junk in the trunk now. So put on my pants anytime. I didn't really have the most embarrassing moment. I guess I skipped out on that. It's good. I played Becky. And she is the, I think, 11-year-old, 10-year-old MIT grad who's very brilliant, of course. But she's not quite um, developed mentally to handle the, the antics that are going on in a high school setting. So she's very sensitive and kind of goes through a emotional roller coasters where one minute she's very aggressive and she's in charge, she's in control, and the next minute she's breaking down, hiding behind a curtain, crying. It's a lot of fun. Raise a bitch. Um, and it's not really me. That's the funny part because I think I'm a pretty nice person. And it's just really fun to go out of character like that. I play Himeko Katagiri, and she says Maho all the time. She's a spaz, badly in need of Paxil. Um, she goes like 100 miles per hour. She likes to tell Becky how totally omega gorgeous she is all the time. And, and she's just, uh, she's a hoot, definitely. I play Kurumi, and she is, unfortunately, the boring girl. And um, when she... When everyone tells her that she's boring, she gets very upset, runs into the rabbit cages, and cries. I play Miss Sosa, the sad, 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 desperately sad bunny who has no thumbs and can't pick up anything. I play Miyako, the little angry nerd with the cool glasses, and I do wear red glasses sometimes. So I, I feel I kind of, you know, look like her sometimes. Okay, so my character is Ichijo, and she's a little bipolar, I guess you could say. She tries, she has this meek and quiet side to her, but then all of a sudden she'll just snap and lose it, and she actually ends up killing the bunny rabbit. And, yeah, she tries to fit in, but the other girls just don't accept her, and she struggles with that a lot. Sure, I break down all the time and hide behind curtains. Um, no, I can't say I went to MIT. Um, when I was 10... I was probably playing with mud pies and dolls. I don't know. But um, uh, the, the manic part of it sometimes, yeah. On the inside. <laughs> I'm kind of, well, I don't really speak my mind like she does. I do under my breath, though, when nobody's watching. I would definitely say that I'm, I'm, a, I'm partially like my character. I'm bubbly and easygoing, and I'm definitely talkative. I can definitely talk your ear off and, you know, either like me or hate me type of thing. So, yeah, I am. She is cool. I really like being mean. Yeah, I like being mean. It's, it's nice. And uh, she's all bitchy and nerdy and crazy. And I'm not so much nerdy because, uh, like, I'm not a big, you know, into school person, but I am mean at times. If you get on my nerves, I'm like, oh, my God, can you just, like, chill out and stop and get on my face? Yeah, I'm like that a lot. So I could, you know, I really, I feel with her. I'm not boring at all, um, but I guess in a way I'm very sensitive to what other people say, and so, you know, I can relate a little bit, but I'm not boring at all. I would say I'm a little bit fiery. I'm an Aries, so I obviously have the fiery blood in me, but no, I've never killed anybody. I've never killed a bunny rabbit. Maybe my fish, because I wasn't very good with goldfish, but never a bunny rabbit. All I know is that I have no thumbs. And then I'm very sad. <laughs> no <laughs> thumbs. <laughs> hmm, that's a good question. I think that I got the part because I can talk really fast and loud, and my voice has that annoying pitch to where I, or I can make it annoying to where it's, it's perfect for the character because she's just annoying and fast and bubbly and blah. And that's how I talk. <laughs> but when I heard the voice of Becky in Japanese, I was like, oh my God, she sounds like me. Because she had a little, like, raspiness to her voice in the Japanese. I was like, ooh, I could do that, I could do that. And it just looked like such a cute show that I think I went psycho on Steven and even called him, like, you have to give me that part, please give me that part. I want that part so badly, oh my God, oh my God. Because I just thought it was so cute. And I love to play those manic characters that, you know, turn on a dime. It's just a lot of fun to do. I think I got the part because I went to the director, Stephen Foster, and said, I really want this part. <laughs> I think that's why I got it. I was scared at first because, you know, I don't, you don't really, this doesn't come around every day. But since me and, you know, Stephen's relationship is like this, 
we <laughs> like I really I have fun. I think because I'm doing it with him and I have I have fun with um with the whole process and everything. It's just cool to be somebody else and like see the cartoon like back at you after you are you know watching it. It's just kind of like, "Oh, that was me." Okay. Oh, there I am again. Well, I got the part um, a friend of mine had told me about ADV Films, and I came in and I auditioned for Steven. And then he just called me in and I auditioned, and I did my voice along with the animation and saw if it matched up well and did different kinds of voices, and I guess I was just a good fit for the character. I first got in the booth, I was really confused on what to do. Steven had to walk me through it, but I got, I got the hang of it pretty quick, and it's a lot of fun. It's really neat. I wish everybody could do it, but they can't because only the talented people can. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I feel like such a fatty in this desk. Please don't put that on there. My favorite subject was English. Um, any of the liberal arts, so English, humanities, French, those were probably my three top favorites. My favorite subject of course was theater and I liked the film club and other than that I guess English. I guess English was my favorite. I didn't like math so much. My favorite class probably is calculus. I'm really good at math and also dance. Which I'm in two dance classes just because I've been doing that since I was three. Oh, I loved English. Um, I had this amazing English teacher my senior year of high school, and we used to watch movies. We'd have a tea day on Wednesdays and watch movies and analyze them. And I also loved history and French. I liked actually pretty much everything. Terrible at math and science, though. I guess sometimes English. And the in, like in the first years of high school, I took a lot of theater classes, which I, I liked those. Just kind of took them for basic stuff. But lunch, that was the main one. <laughs> My favorite teacher in high school. Well, I guess that would have to be my theater teacher. I would have to say my favorite teacher ever was Mrs. Everson. Uh, Miss Davis. We called her Dis Mavis. She was really cool. I don't really think I had one, but uh, I kind of enjoyed the PE teacher because of the funny way that he liked to sit. I liked my uh, senior high school uh, uh, English class. Short shorts, if you know what I mean. <laughs> with our uh, cool teacher with the long blonde hair. He was cool. Probably. Miss Feinstein, she was the French teacher. Um, Mr. Dipple, my calculus teacher. She was just really cool. You know, she always wore these cool little glasses and had spiky hair and dressed really cute, pretty much like all the kids. I used to not like him very much, but now I do because I learned how to suck up and he likes me. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite teacher was Mr. Beale. Yes, he was awesome. She really believed in me and gave me um, a lot of confidence as a young woman. He had a really good way of teaching. He would take answers if they were funny, even if they weren't the right answers, because it was funny and it made him laugh. And uh, if you were ever sleeping, he'd slap you in the head with a huge, like, four-foot-long ruler. So he, he was hilarious. Ooh. Teacher that I hated the most, Miss Penlin. Mr. Dipple can just kiss my butt. <laughs> what teacher did I hate? I'm not gonna say that. She was a mean, mean mother. She wasn't really my teacher, but she was our cheerleading sponsor. Oh, she was evil. I did not like her. She was almost sexist. She's a woman, but she'd like always let the boys go to the bathroom and never let the girls, and always let the boys answer, and never let the girls answer. And she's old, and she had squinty eyes and glasses, and she had a high-pitched voice. She'd always, you know, be like, oh, your, shorts too, your shirt's too short, or raise your arms, I can see your belly button. She didn't really care about us. She just said, you know, girls, oh, I just, I just didn't like her at all. She had this complex, and she didn't like girls, and she did not like me, so I really did not like her. Oh, any girls I hated? Well... <laughs> oh yeah, I had my enemies. Oh yeah, definitely. Not really. I'm sure that there were plenty of people who hated me though. Because when you're quiet and you're shy, a lot of people think you're stuck up. No, but my best friend turned into my enemy. Oh, she's stuck up. Her name was Crystal. She's uppity. <laughs> and she got the same prom dress as one of the other, my other best friend, and there was this big fight and everything. It was, it was bad. She did it on purpose, though, so we hated her for it. No, I don't have any enemies. Um, I have a lot of guy friends, and I also have a lot of girlfriends. There's actually a few girls that I hated in high school, sadly. However, 
whenever I first meet girls, they seem to instantly hate me for some reason. But then once they get to know me, they like me. But I don't have any enemies. There was a girl, Lindsay, that I really, really, really hated. Um, we were friends at first, and and she tried to get together with Duncan, which was my boyfriend at the time, and it was a big dramatic thing, and then she keyed my car, so I keyed her car, and then I slashed her tires, and then she slashed my tires, and yeah, so we hated each other most definitely. <laughs> These mean girls that were friends with my ex-boyfriend, they had all, a lot of them had dated him, so after I started dating him, we're not the same type of people. They're like all grungy looking girls. I didn't like them. And after they were like, like, oh, you like her? They were totally mad at him. And this is this went on for like a long time. Called me names in high school, rude to me, just would see me at a party, like would chase me, my friend, out. And I mean, I know I may look like a tough girl, but I run. I mean, I run. <laughs> Get in my car. Like, that's my biggest weapon, my car, because I will run you over with my car, but I won't use these things, you know. Yeah, I'm not very intimidating. Well, there was always this group of girls that were just awful to people, and I had been with them ever since I was three years old. They lived in the same neighborhood, and one girl in particular, her name's Lauren West. Hope you're not watching, or maybe you are. And she was just awful. Just, you know, she thought she was beautiful. She had horse teeth. She was just mean to people, and she followed me. I thought when I went to college I'd get rid of her. No, she ended up living in the same dorm as me. Yeah, and we had the same class together, and she told everyone we knew each other. And I just can't stand her to this day. I can't stand her, and I keep track of what she's doing and how miserable her life has been. It sounds really mean, but she's an awful person. I went to Lamar Consolidated High School outside of Houston. Um, I was telling somebody the other day, if you've seen the movie Election, her on crack would probably be me because I had to be involved in everything. So if I wasn't in the club and like president of the club, then I wasn't happy. So if there was a contest of anything, I wanted to be in the contest and hopefully win it, but it didn't always happen that way. I went to high school at Clear Creek High School in League City, Texas, and I was a metalhead. Queen's Rack. <laughs> Iron Maiden. So, yeah, I hung out uh, at the back of the school. Um, but I was very smart. And mostly I was just doing people's homework. <laughs> I'm not smart anymore. It wore off. I go to Humble High School. I'm class president, and I'm captain on the drill team. I'm in FFA, where I raise animals, like my steer named Brutus. And I've also raised about four or five lambs, and I've had rabbits forever. And also, I'm in National Honor Society and Student Council. I went to Kempner High School, and that's in Sugarland, Texas, off of Voss and Highway 6. I was a country girl, uh, mostly. I rode horses and barrel raced in the rodeo, and I was in FFA, and and then I did theater besides that, musical theater and stuff like that. And that's how I ended up getting into this in the first place. I went to Clear Lake High School in Clear Lake. I was the hyper one with the big poopy hair. Um, we didn't have flat irons when I was like younger. So uh, just kind of throwed it out sometimes. <laughs> and um, just, I, I really just, I just, I found the friends that we're not involved in anything, and we just kind of did our own thing. A lot of laughter, a lot of peeing in our pants from laughter. And I was just, I was kind of just the kid that, I did get good grades. I always went to class. I was like, oh my gosh, y'all are skipping. And you know, oh my gosh, y'all smoke cigarettes, but then I changed a little bit, <laughs> got a little corrupted, and, <laughs> but high school was a, a cool experience. And I was just one of those, one of those weird kids. I went to high school, Smoky Hill High School in Aurora, Colorado, a very suburban public high school. I was a good mix, I guess you could say. I was one of the popular kids. I hung out with the popular kids and I dated, you know, the football players and homecoming princess type. And then I was also very smart. I was in IB, it was called International Baccalaureate, so it was advanced classes. And then I was in drama club, so I was a wide array and I had a lot of different kinds of friends which people either liked or they didn't, but I like to be diverse. I went to high school on the north side of Houston and Westfield High School. I was a cheerleader, I was president of my thespian club, but I don't know if I was necessarily in the popular group. I kind of, I don't know, maybe I was too boring. <laughs> I think high 
high school is always a great place to set any sort of, you know, sitcom or comedy like this because we all have had the experience or we're all going to have the experience. And, you know, the stereotypes just hold true. I'm sorry. I don't care where you go to school. You know, there are the popular ones, the geeky ones, the athletic ones, the ones who don't know what the heck's going on. Because high school's funny and high school's awkward and it's the years you'll never forget. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> it's just funny. It's funny in real life. I'm in high school right now, and it's just funny. It's the time where you got hormones, and so everyone's experiencing themselves for the first time, and feet are growing faster than anything else, and limbs are going, and everyone's clumsy. and Because everything that sucks is in high school. <laughs> everyone's just discovering who they are, and uh, there's there's... Lots of social drama that can happen. Everybody knows the drama, and there's also, in Pony Pony Dash, there's also all the different personality types, like the bully and the spaz and the um, super inventive one that sneaks and spies on everyone, and there's the bookworm, and so, and everybody can laugh at that because everyone's been there and known those people in high school. You got all different types of people. We, we, funky things happen that... I mean, I would that would never happen now happened in my high school. Or you can laugh at them now, but back then it was like the end of your life, which is pretty funny. High school is a great place to set a comedy just because everyone can relate to it. Um, you know, you have your stereotypical characters and your cliques that everyone knows about. And, you know, everything is so, so important in high school and so serious. And, you know, we can all make fun of ourselves. I think it's fun. <laughs> I went to Bel Air High School. I went to A. Leaf Hastings High School in Houston, Texas. I went to Dulles High School. Safir High School. I went to Bel Air High School. Do not ask me what year. <laughs> and then, because of several interesting events, I ended up going my senior year to a private school, which was much smaller and kind of for fucked up kids. Oh, I'm sorry. I went to Hamilton High School. To Bonanza High School in Las Vegas, Nevada. I went to high school at LaPorte High School in Texas, near the petrochemical industry center point of the United States. Wow, what was I like in high school? I was really awkward in high school. I, I didn't know really where I fit. I didn't really belong to any particular clique. I was pretty much like hanging out in between everybody. Kind of that chick that went from one group to another. I was. Fabulous. I had a lot of friends, but I didn't have any really close friends because I was friends with everybody. Like you had the kickers, which were the cowboys and the cowgirls. I was a theater nerd, as I'm sure a lot of other gals here have said. I was a big dork. People who wore the jeans that separate your butt and lift. I was a dork. Girl's butt looked like pears. I'm like how I was like now, very loud, and I like to dance, and I like to act. I was kind of shy. I wasn't... Uh, a pothead <laughs> and um, stuff like that. I was really good at theater. I, I discovered I was good at theater, I'm not so good at sports. I mean, I had to play sports the whole time I was there because of my athletic bill. So instead of tripping over things, it was, you know, five, six, seven, eight jazz hands. I was a dork, but in a cool way. Like, I wasn't. Any particular, I wasn't in a particular group of kids. I had cheerleader friends, I had jock friends, I had surfer friends, but I did hang with the kind of weirdo, like, you know, punk crowd, <laughs> go figure. You know, being a redhead, you never want to be a redhead because nobody else had red hair. I wanted to be blonde. Very good girl, bows in my hair. I wore pink lipstick and blue eyeliner, which does not fare well for redheads, but that's what I did. Yeah, it was not pretty. <laughs> I went into drill team my sophomore year. And then it was the summer between my sophomore and junior year, I started dating my first punk rock boyfriend. And from that point on, it was black hair, mohawks, <laughs> bad attitude, a <laughs> few other things. I went through a phase where I, you know, didn't wash my hair a lot. I was really more into, like, dramatic types of things. Because I wanted it to, you know, be natural and all that. So I was in the drama club as an actress. I was that weird girl that kind of just came up to your lunch table and sat next to you and started talking whether you liked it or not. So that was me. <laughs> I don't know. Behoimi. I play Behoimi. Hibiki. Um, Yizuku Kuresi. Miss Igara Igarashi. Yuma and Yuna in Pony Pony. I do play Tome the Jock. I play 
the little, the little klutzy girl who trips on things a lot. In Pony Pony, I play Sayaka, number six. She is the very, 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 very sweet girl with the big, 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 big blue hair. Um, and she's been a blast. She's just a little dingy. Very, very, very sweet girl, very good intentions, but just a little on the kind of dingy, slow side. And that's exactly what I like to play. I play media. She thinks she's a superhero and that she's really cool and smart, but bless her heart, she's not so much. <laughs> I play Zula. I play Akane, I play the drama queen. Zula is like a strong African-American character, but, but she, 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 she has like a, like a kind of a kid in play kind of like haircut, but not as tall as him. And she doesn't have a lot of lines. It was really hard to play this part because my voice is so light and Steven like, he's an awesome director by the way. He, he fought with me, but I say more like coaching to make me have to get down into like a bassier register. I am a lot like my character. Um, I tend to uh, jump over the dinghy line where she kind of walks it. Um, she's pretty gullible, and I know I'm very gullible. Uh, the only thing we don't have in common is the blue of the hair. My hair is very big, not blue, but uh, yeah, I would say we have a lot in common. And you know, she has to deal with Himeko, and I have to deal with Brittany, so pretty much the same thing. Um, oh, well, media is kind of. She's not really mean to anyone, even though they're mean to her. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess I'm like her in that way. I was not a jock. I, I'm, I'm scared of balls. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if I should answer that. <laughs> She's a little drunk and obnoxious. Maybe. I'm scared that, you know, kickball, <laughs> baseball, volleyball. I'm going to get hit in the face. <laughs> I don't think I was cool, but I wasn't as ditzy klutzy as my character in the show. Well, she's a lot ditzier, and I can I can get into that. Um, I have that tendency. Of course I can relate. <laughs> it's the exact same thing. I think um, she, she has a lot more going on underneath than you can see. Love Hibiki. She's as goofy as me. She's my, I wish I was, I wish I got to be her every day. Because <laughs> my, the goofiest part of me is so Hibiki. Hey, what's up? Hey, let's do this. <laughs> She's a go-get em girl. Love her. Big dork. Like me? Of course. Um, yes, because she seems a little uh, out there and wild, and um, I think that's what I am. She doesn't seem afraid to take too many chances. Sure. I think sometimes. Yeah. I would probably say I'm a mix of both. <laughs> I was. I think I was, to an extent. But I'm not the slut. Drama was the only thing I was ever naturally good at. It just clicked. I have the outgoing spirit of the slutty character, and then at times I could be shy too, so I think I've, I'm a mix, equal balance. I got my first uh, offer for a, a drama scholarship, which was a miracle of God because I was not a smarty. I was not going to get a scholarship to college. Um, and it was just like, oh, this whole new world is like opening up. They might, I might get to go to college on a theater scholarship? Are you kidding me? And um, we're on the bus on the way back. And the whole way back, I'm listening to this dude I actually had a crush on for a while who was in the crew. And all these people in the back talking about me and talking about how, oh, I thought I was all this and yickety yak and boo. And I really wasn't. And I only got this because my mom worked there and blah, 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 blah. And I just got madder and madder, and and I'm crying. I'm sitting there, and by the time we made it back, which is, it was only like a 40-minute ride, I got off the bus, and either Sa either Sandra Lingefeld or Tina Summers or somebody was like, Lucy, honey, what is wrong? And I was like, I am going to be an actress for a living, and I'm going to leave this town, and I'm going to do it. And I walked down the street. Ah. Uh, Oh, dear God. <laughs> High school is a brilliant setting for a comedy because you have so many different groups of people. that You have these awesome stock, stereotypical groups of people. And everyone thinks they're the best and everyone thinks everyone else is horrible and awful. The nature of it is that they're at odds with one another. <laughs> 
So, I mean, right there, you just have conflict. You know? <laughs> it's true. And part of being in this group is being against that group. Immediate conflict. I mean, have you seen Mean Girls? Which is funny. Hello. The guys are in completely different hormonal zones than the girls are. You can't get any more stupid than high school girls. Because we do the dumbest things in high school. There's so many life-changing experiences happening. I mean, besides the fact that your body is changing, your mind is changing. The girls become women like that. And then the guys are still like, Ugh. I know, I experimented with color and bleaching my hair. And now when I look back on it, you're just kind of crazy. From 15 to 18, girls are just kind of stupid. Everyone's hormones are freaking out. And that, I think, is comedy. It's just so funny, the things that you do without thinking or thinking that you know what you're doing and that it looks okay and then you come back and you're going, huh, why did I do that? So I think that's the perfect place to set a comedy because you could go either way. It could be comedy or drama. Either way, those girls are right there. The things that you say or the ideas that you have saving the world. Um... Because it's the best and worst time of your life. I went to school in the 80s and 90s, so we used Aquanet, which was like the ozone destroyer, ozone layer destroyer. You're so stupid as a girl when you're in high school that that's the perfect place to put comedy. Because our hair was so high, you had to use it. But we had one girl that was gonna save the world so we could not use Aquanet. Everything happens in high school. You go through everything in high school. You have all these different types of characters. There's drama and... Then you've got the really cool guys. Hormones are raging and you know, like there's millions of things that happen in high school and you just look fondly on those days. Everything gets messed up. Then you got the guys who think they're cool. I mean, it's just... It's the perfect setting. The kids are crazy, the teachers are compl I mean, teachers alone should have their own reality shows. I mean, high school, it's, it's like very interesting and... I remember being in a class thinking, a long time ago, before there were reality shows, just thinking, wow, all the personalities in here, we should have our own show. There's a lot of different people, so you have like a lot of different types of personalities. If you had one, you know, one person type, in, you know, one type in the whole class, you know, filling the class, it was awesome, you know just crazy. I mean, you're there to learn, but at the same time, you have all your friends. And then there's me toting guns at school. There's a good episode right there. Like sometimes you like a boy and he doesn't like you, and then all your friends say something bad about you because they know that you like him. <laughs> they make fun of you because because you're bigger than they are, or you can, you're stronger than them, or maybe like in my case, you're a better actress. So I think I think high school's good for comedy because high school's funny. Everyone's trying to figure out who they want to be and how they want to be identified, and that's funny to me. That's comedy. In all honesty, I know people think Pony Pony's a little far-fetched, but I think it's pretty close to what high school's like for a teenage girl. Um. Oh man. Was really a moment, but I was never asked to any of the dances. <laughs> so many. Most embarrassing moment in high school, I kid you not. It was the first day that I decided I wanted to wear high heels to school. I wanted to be a little sexy. First day of school, I, you know, you're in this big school, you're the shortest person, and you're a freshman, and you're walking around. <clears throat> I guess it had been raining or something, I don't remember, uh, but I was wearing too high of heels. And I walked right into the boys' bathroom to use it. But I thought I looked <laughs> awesome. And stood there looking at urinals, wondering why they were in the women's bathroom. So the bus is unloaded and we walked inside to the entrance to the school. But I didn't leave. I just stood there because I didn't understand. <laughs> and of course it was a really slick ground and there was a giant puddle. And then a boy walked in. And so here was my first day wearing high heels and Boom. It was terrible. And I turned around and walked out. That's a nightmare. No one really saw me walk out the door, but that guy did. And I don't think he told anyone, but it was pretty embarrassing. It scarred me a little bit. It hurt a little bit. There's one that nobody knows about, but it was the most embarrassing for me. Oh, God. Oh, I'm about to actually say this. You ready? 
this is kind of gross. We, right before we moved to Hamilton, my dad took me to this um, athletic banquet, the end of the year athletic banquet so that I could meet everybody. When I was in junior high, okay, eighth grade, so it's almost high school. I have lots of embarrassing stories, but this one's really good. Which is kind of funny because I'm not an athlete. <laughs> but I was gonna go meet the athletes and, and all the people because it's small schools, you know. And, and it was the day before, uh, like a spring break kind of a thing. So I made this trip with him and I had to sit at the front of the room with him. And you know how they're, um, they gather the classes for like parties and things like that right before a break like that? At this big, there's the banquet table and everybody else sits out here. So they're looking at you the whole time. My friends had tried to get me to eat at lunch and I wasn't feeling well because I was, you know, upset. So I'm the new girl, the coach's kid, new coach's girl sitting there beside him with all these people looking at me, surrounded by teachers and other coaches and whatnot. So I'm just eating my thing. Well, halfway through the presentation, which was inordinately long, I'm sitting in a desk like this and I'm sitting like towards the back of the class and there's three classes in there and two, two rows ahead of me is Troy, G Troy Gambino, maybe? I think that was his last name. And I had a big crush on him, right? Okay, picture this. He's two desks ahead of me. I'm right here. And all of a sudden, I have got to go to the bathroom. Well, for some reason in school, you don't want anybody to know you ever have a bodily function. I don't know what that's about, but it's like, you just don't want anyone to know you ever pee. You, didn't, you just don't even say it. And pooping, forget it. So, I puke. <laughs> I sat there and I sat there and my eyes started watering and I was squeezing and squeezing and just trying to hold out and hold out. Okay, I puke on my desk like this, right? But I'm pretending that I did it. <laughs> Rather than get up, just get up and walk out the door and go to the bathroom. I sit there and sit there and sit there and finally I just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm just like this, right? Hoping that it doesn't go anywhere and nobody notices or smells a thing. <laughs> so I'm sitting there looking like, <laughs> just letting it go. And I'm like, okay, and now I'm sitting in it. So then about two seconds later, right in front of Troy, stands up Dina Shoemaker and says, Leslie just threw up. I sort of got up and pushed my chair in and hung out next to the wall and told my dad I was gonna go to the truck for a little bit and go ahead and change. And everyone got up and ran out of the room. And I just scooted out and changed my clothes and threw the dress away and never spoke of it. It was mortifying. But I thought, you know, some poor janitor is going to go along and they're going to be stacking chairs in about two hours and they're going to go, oh, what It's quite dramatic <laughs> with the running and the shouting and the puke. <laughs> and that's um, pretty embarrassing now. <laughs> Dude, I was like this. Um, that didn't happen until college. Um, <laughs> my first lesbian experience was actually at ADV. <laughs> what? First lesbian experience? Huh. <laughs> um, that wasn't high school. I kid you not, there was a female in my drama club. What? And she had a kid, too. But she said, she said some nasty things to me. And she invited me to join one of her experiences and I said, My parents won't be watching this. <laughs> she pulled me aside and she said, Serena, if you ever want to experience any, <laughs> she, she honestly said this and I didn't know what to say to her. I just said, um, okay, um, <laughs> thanks, I'll call you. <laughs> You got me last time. I knew better now. And that was the first time ever. I was like totally blown away. You know, I'm like innocent kid here and I heard about some things that she did. Huh. I will never forget that because that was the first time ever. Oh, this That's better awesome. not be edited to the point where... Favorite subject in school? History. Hindi. We, uh... Bel Air was known for having all these different types of foreign languages, and my favorite subject, hands down, was Hindi. English. I was, English was the only class I was ever like any honors was attached to 
class, English was it because it was about reading and and artists and and emotions and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, have fun. Um, boys, <laughs> I. You know, I think I liked I liked choir. I wasn't much of a school person. I I liked performing. I always have. So I wasn't um I liked English cuz they let me write. And I didn't like gym. And I didn't like um I hated math. I still hate math. Well, I was in cosmetology my junior and senior year in high school. So I actually had my hairdresser's license before I graduated high school. So that was my favorite subject. Mm. I think I liked math. I was really good at that and calculus and stuff. Theater. <laughs> I love theater a lot. That's where I discovered that I could act and um and I love theater. Let's see. My favorite subject in school. Actually, probably English. My favorite subject in school was theater. I was a drama nerd, only we made it cool at our school. It was cool to be in drama. What subject did you hate? I hated algebra. I am definitely not a math person. It's the only class I almost failed. It was very sad. My favorite subject was drama. <laughs> But I would say anything that had to do with performing or I took interior design, you know, anything that had to do with the artsy stuff I liked, anything that had to do with being quiet and serious was really difficult for me. <laughs> I had teachers that would, we were in the ghetto, okay, so I had teachers that threw like staplers and shoes and rulers. Yeah, those are bad <laughs> memories. <laughs> I hated PE because I mean, seriously, girls cannot get all sweaty in high school, get all sweaty from running around the track, and then the bell rings and you have four minutes to then shower and get all dressed again, and you're wearing, like, you know, ugly gym clothes, and you're just, it's just not good. I like science. My favorite teacher. My, <laughs> my favorite teacher? Ooh, favorite teacher. My favorite teacher was Miss Carol Lohman. She taught the Stanislavski method, an acting class, and so we got all deep in method and our emotions, and it was great. The only one I remember, even though it was just like yesterday, um, was Mrs. Brackman, my cosmetology teacher. She was, she was an older lady, and then she would also kind of try to teach us the facts of life. My Hindi teacher, Mr. Prasad, because when you talk like this, <laughs> I love them. I love them. Oh, um, I really liked Mrs. Rogers. Mrs. Rogers was uh, our English teacher, and she was really awesome. She was just a really cool lady. Dottie Rogers, Dorothy. I don't know where she is now. I had one, um, Mr. Fredrickson and uh, Mr. Morgan, both of them were just so comical all the time and they wouldn't let me come up to the board. At first they tried. At first they, you know, they would say, okay, Miss Martinez, come up to the board and write out the problem. And when they realized that I got to the right answer but nobody could figure out how and then the whole class would end up confused, they quit doing that. <laughs> uh, English professor named uh, Stephen Olson and he rode his little scooter. He rode a little scooter to school every day and he was just very, he was he was really crazy, and and his class was very non-conventional. And in a in a small town Texas school, that's kind of hard to come by. So a lot of the kids really appreciated that. My favorite teacher in high school, I actually had two, and they were my theater teachers. It was Paul Crump and Jeanette Filardo, two very great people, kind of like the mother figure and the father figure for our little drama crew. And um, they pretty much let us get away with anything. You know, we had that last period theater class where we could make runs to Taco Bell and, you know, act stupid. And we got away with a lot. I think I missed every Monday of my senior year, thanks to <laughs> My favorite teacher was my drama teacher, Mr. Powell. And he, he actually passed away my junior year in high school. And he was, he was just awesome. He was so great, and I spent the most amount of time with him because in drama, you're in the plays and you're there till midnight rehearsing, so we spent a lot of time with this teacher, and he was, he was awesome. My favorite teacher in high school was Mr. Bra. She was from China, Texas. 
I like Shana because they make nice beer in Shana. I don't remember. I can't. I had a biology teacher, even though I and even though I hated biology, and I can't think of her name. Mrs. Smith. We'll say she was awesome. I think she was also a PE coach. <laughs> Uh, she might have liked girls, but anyway, um, she was a great teacher. <laughs> Can I say something like a little bit rank? So, this is the one thing I remember about her. Um, somehow she was getting on a little facts of life uh, uh, conversation in cosmetology class one day, and we couldn't stop laughing because she always called it a penis. <laughs> I'm just uh... I guess if I can't think of one, that means I don't have a favorite, right? I'm a method anime actress. <laughs> I like to really dwell or delve into my character. <laughs> there was a lot of girls that I didn't like in high school. Because they would make fun of me and uh, just one girl this one girl, Tina Thompson, she stole my boyfriend from me. I was so pissed off at that girl, I wanted to just hit her. Miss Thompson, she was my computer teacher. I don't think I hated a teacher. I didn't really hate her, but when she, when you did something wrong, she would, she would just snap at you. I know that's bad. Let me think. It was the worst thing, but I, I did good in that class. I, I like that in accounting, too. I didn't hate a teacher. Oh, we had this one teacher, and I can't remember her name. Miss Sherman, I think? And it was for AP English. Believe it or not, I was an honor student. I don't know what happened. I don't think that I hated anybody. I didn't really hate any, but I had this one teacher who will remain nameless, and she looked like Dolores Claiborne meets Stephen King. It was for this honors English class, and this woman was so little and so mean, we found out that she was allergic to perfume. And so one day, all the girls in the class decided that we would wear, like, the skankiest perfume we could find. So we all went to the drugstore and bought really nasty perfume and then bathed ourselves in it. And Yeah, poor Miss Sherman. If she's watching, I'm sorry, Miss Sherman. She just was school marm to the nth degree, and we had to read the Norton Anthology of Literature, which is about this thick. It, it was, she was my English teacher my senior year, and the personality was just below zero. And I mean, come on, we need help staying awake as it is, and that just did not help. I hated this girl named Teresa because she got all the roles that I wanted, and um, so, I, it, uh, so it was a lovely envy. But she was very good, so she made me want to be better. But I, you know, if she had died in high school, I would have been okay with that. Mm mm. Because then I would have gotten all the roles I wanted. But I won't say her last name. But she's not a famous actress yet, <laughs> and I am. The main cheerleader, which I'm not going to say her name, just in case this is ever dug up. She stole my boyfriend, so I really kind of just wanted to, you know, take care of her. There was this teacher named Mr. Popno in Brady. And I was even more awkward as a freshman. I was really weird. I had bad hair. I did not know how to dress. I was a total nerd dork. Nobody knew I existed. But Mr. Popno in chemistry or biology, one of those one of those kind of classes that I wouldn't do very well in, he was crazy and he was totally perverted and he would rock walk around with this uh, uh, ruler. And when he wasn't trying to look up girl skirts, he was like slamming the ruler around and really freaking you out and scaring you. He was a total loose cannon. It freaked me out. Yeah. The ones that told me I couldn't do, or the ones that I didn't feel like I could perform as well in that class, you know, I think those got me down. I don't remember. I remember there was this one guy who taught either Texas history or American history, I don't remember. And he was also a coach, you know? And uh, actually, I liked him. Well, I kind of liked him and I hated him. But if you weren't paying attention, my best friend was in the same class. We were always kind of cutting up and everything and getting in trouble and getting sent outside and such. And uh, any time, like, you started falling asleep in class, which happens a lot when you're in high school, all of a sudden, from across the room, boom, 
He would nail you in the head with the eraser. Didn't really hate any teachers. Yeah, I really didn't hate any teachers. I don't remember his name. I just remember getting nailed all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really hate anybody. I just kind of did my own thing. I got along with everyone. I hung out with the guys and I hung out with the girls too. I probably had more guy friends than girlfriends. God bless you, Mr. Bob. No, I hope you're doing well somewhere out there. My first crush? In high school? Boy or girl? Uh. <laughs> <sighs> oh God, I knew this question was gonna come up. If I keep it to high school, then that was, um, that was Jim Miles. Adam Wade. Saul Wright. He was so alternative and wore eyeliner, and I loved him. He was tall, and he was uh, very muscular. But he was gorgeous. He was really sweet and really cute. And really hot and awesome, and I couldn't believe he liked me. And I kissed him under the bleachers, and I thought he was so cute, and he's so gay now. Mm-hmm. And I was a little sophomore, and I was very doughy-eyed at this guy, and um, we played servants in the show. And he liked me. We just came on and off in various stages of undress, and so I was like, oh my god, I'm a sophomore, and he's so dreamy, and he's carrying me, oh my god. I would describe him as, um, I don't know, tall, dark, and handsome, that kind of look. <laughs> Of course, they're like three feet tall because they're all six years old. Like in kindergarten? <laughs> Xavier Little. He was this hot little Spanish boy. Oh, dear God. Menudo. <laughs> mm, he was smaller than me, but I just, I like him smaller than me like that because it makes me feel like I'm in control. My first crush will go with a celebrity. I grew up in a very traditional... Mexican family, so I didn't even get to really listen to the radio or anything like that until like high school. My major, major crush, probably more middle school than high school, but it kind of branched over, was Corey Feldman. I had this crush on him because he was in a movie and in my mind I was a little girl. I saw a crush on Richie Rich one time. <laughs> of all people, I just dated myself so bad. All of my musical influences were like Pedro Infante, Vicente Fernandez. Them or uh, Duran Duran. There was a guy in Duran Duran named John Taylor, and he had the awesome, most awesome feathered hairdo. It was just amazing. Mariachi type stuff. So I used to have a crush on Vicente Fernandez. Everybody can go MySpace, I mean, Google him up or whatever. I loved him, and that's the one she stole away from me. <laughs> I hate her. Okay, my first and biggest high school crush was Mike Chapman, and I'll have to show him this. He'll be so happy he got a name, or his name mentioned. Mike Chapman, he's my Jake Ryan. You know what Jake Ryan is? The first girl I like, she was a big thing, but I like them big when it comes to my women. And she played basketball with me, so I think maybe it was all that bumping on the court when I was in the post position that just kind of made me feel like something over there was special. Jake Ryan from 16 Candles. He was, remember her big crush? He was my Jake Ryan, that's what I tell everybody. Mike Chapman. Talked to him on the phone last night, actually. We've known each other for that long. Yeah, I'm old. I'm not gonna say her name, cause she might see this DVD. She's like, she likes anime. <laughs> Funny thing is I went to high school with my brother. So when I was a freshman, he was a senior and I had the biggest crush on one of his friends, which is the grossest thing because he's one of my good friend's brothers. I think that was third grade, I think. But I almost, I don't know if I've imagined it, but I, I believe that he kissed me even. And this awesome, like, in the hallway by the lockers. I still see him till this day, and now I look at him like, gross, I had a crush on you? So yeah, his name was... I can't tell you. <laughs> I don't remember him actually really ever saying anything. <laughs> but I have this really vivid recollection of him like leaning against a locker in all of his third grade glory and kissing me. Maybe it's a dream. Oh, my first kiss. God. My first kiss was at... at... <laughs> okay, my first kiss was with Adam Wade. I just found him on my space too. I'm not a hooch, I swear. I didn't have very many boyfriends. I had like four. 
And then I married the fourth one. <laughs> well, my first, my first kiss was probably like in fifth grade, I guess. Seventh grade at the Valentine's Day dance. Uh, he was actually my very first boyfriend. So of course it was cool because, you know, he was a junior and I was a freshman and I thought it was cool and now it's not so cool. <laughs> His name was Dexter Thompson and we was by the soda machines and I was buying some strawberry soda and he was getting a Sprite. I think his name was Jimmy. So it was during a game of Truth or Dare. He bumps up against me and... We, you know, kissed. Next thing you know, it was magic. Oh, you know what? I had a, like, a third, second or third cousin. He kissed me in a tree in second grade. That might have been the first one. You know, it's a kiss. Um, it's, it's really good. And he put his tongue in my mouth and I was like, whoa! I was at my locker getting ready to go to class and um, he was standing next to me. You know how you talk in the locker in the hallway. And then he snuck in and gave me a kiss. It was amazing, I guess. <laughs> I just, of course, I don't think of it as like the best kiss I've ever had, but it was good. Close your mouth because it was the first kiss. And then um, I went, oh, what's that about? That's, I don't like that. And so it was very awkward. I think my first kiss was probably like at a junior high birthday party. You know, it was like one of those, okay, your turn. <laughs> it was very exciting. So it wasn't really special at all. It was like five minutes of not breathing. And then I told my mom about it later and she laughed at me. Or five seconds, I should say. Cause you know how you kiss and you're like, do I breathe, do I not breathe? Boring. My first kiss was in the eighth grade, before I made it to high school. At a, like, a dance party in someone's backyard. Classy. I didn't know exactly how it all worked. He bought me goobers and then we kissed and it was nothing. He went in for the kill and I was there and I felt something pressing against my closed teeth. Goobers, they're chocolate covered peanuts I believe. And that's when I was like, no, no tongue action or anything like that. That didn't come till the bleachers. Oh, it's, it's that kind of kiss. And yeah, so it was a little awkward. Nobody had explained anything to me. <laughs> it was one of those, oh, you're about to, oh. Nobody had said anything to me and that whole thing was weird. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. So I've gotten better at it since. Lots of practice, kids. I should have learned my lesson the first couple of times. <laughs> well. I was 16 years old when I had my first kiss. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> Kissing cousins, who doesn't have that? Come on. So I had four titties. <gasps> Very painful. And you're gonna, you're gonna edit stuff out so I can just talk like a crazy person and not have to worry about it. Right. All right. I'm probably gonna laugh and smile too much and freak the people out. No, you look great. Well, I don't. I just didn't study. I didn't really have the time for it, and you didn't, you I just shit. no, I didn't. <laughs> I really didn't care. That's, awesome. That's okay. Mr. Dipple can just kiss my butt. Well, actually, I kind of like him now. Really? We've tried yes. to call him Mr. Dipple. Yes, because I I'm, I learned how to suck up. My mom taught me. He gives me better grades. <laughs> He even gave me um, a Panera Bread gift card. He's a lot older. My dad doesn't like that very much. You're sucking up very well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. All these chicks are bitches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. See, my interview's gonna be all, all cracked out and weird. Yeah, well, don't lean on your mic too much. <laughs> okay, excuse me. You gotta, you gotta use that shot. I think it's over. I used to not like him very much, but now I do because I learned how to suck up and he likes me. <laughs> My mother is gonna watch this. <laughs> wow, I mean, you can't stop looking at her. She's hot. I went to Bel Air High School. I might have to do that over again. <laughs> I went to... <laughs> Adam watches her breasts all the time when she's in the booth. I'm gonna cut that out. I'm not gonna cut it out. Monica's not on this DVD because she's at a convention. Yeah, I'm gonna... Oh, I saw a crush on Richie Rich one time. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about the show. Well, Pony Pony... Po what, what is it? Pony Pony Dash. Oops, 
I dropped something. I was really more into like dramatic types of things. So I was in the drama club as an actress. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're there to learn and everything, but. <laughs> you want me to start over? <laughs> what was your <laughs> I like science. <laughs> <laughs> he bumps up against me, and next thing you know, it was magic. I'm just making this shit up. Oh my I was... god, it's so crazy. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. One day, that pizza made my stomach ill, so I had to switch over to brown bag, because my mom was like, no, nah, you're not going to be having to go to the doctor every week. And so I just started taking my own lunch with Tupperware. <laughs> <laughs> Are you laughing at me? You're funny. Um, what was your first lesbian experience? <sighs> Oh, I hate you. I, I hate you already. <laughs> <laughs> I know badness is about to come.